This is our pussycat Luna. Luna is known for having a, almost a hypersensitive little body because we've been with her through so many different life-threatening infections since she was as old as four months. And the latest thing that uh, she got a couple of um, weeks ago was an eye infection. Her eyes would tear up for no reason. And uh, this started around April the 9th of this year. So, of course, we took her to the vet and she got medications for it. It went slow, but eventually it did get better. But the big scare she gave us was on June the 17th, when all of a sudden she started acting very, very strange. Literally trying to walk up the walls and not able to keep her little body straight. And uh, despite the growing hero, uh, horror we started to feel inside, we didn't know what to do or what we were looking at. So the only thing that we tried to do is keep talking to her and trying to get her uh, attention in an attempt to get her focused again and hopefully make whatever was happening go away. Uh, this didn't help, however, and this seizure attack got worse to the point where she actually passed out for only a fraction of what is it, a couple of seconds, after which she woke up, climbed on the couch, and went to sit down on it as if nothing happened. While we felt our heart beating in uh, our throats. So, we took her immediately to the vet again, and after hearing our story, the vet told us what we basically already guessed, Luna had an epileptic seizure attack. Uh, and asked if we wanted to have her examined thoroughly and of course we did so we went ahead with it so the first thing he did was drawing some blood and a simple procedure one would think as the drawing of blood was the start of yet another another medical episode little horror story for Luna and for us who would have thought and this all happened on June the 17th this visit to the vet and I'm giving you these date specifics you guys to give you a time frame how long some uh, conditions can last so so we went on June the 17th to the doctor they got her examined they draw some blood uh, and when it comes to uh, epilepsy with cats and dogs the vet normally tells you from what I understand uh, that it can happen only one time so it's just a one-time attack but it can also be that one time can also be the start of something that would last a lifetime and in those uh, cases the cat or the pet uh, the, the your pet in general will get medications for the rest of uh, its life so um yeah it can it can be very serious um anyway we are happy as of today we're now in september thank god we're happy that we haven't seen any other seizure attacks so we're hoping to god that it was just that one time and it will never happen again but just giving you guys some info that if it doesn't have if, if it doesn't happen only one time and it does occur a second time you're probably looking at something that will be with them sadly for the rest of their uh, life the only thing that the vet can do is not really much just like with humans um he can give you some medication to suppress the the impact of the seizure that's the only thing that he can do so yeah so thank god that uh, epilepsy attack turned out to be uh, a one-time thing and we hope we will never have to see it again because it looks scary heartbreaking really heartbreaking and it just it, it just goes to your heart when you, you see that you see your pet that you love so much going through that and you see the the, the the desperate look in their eyes just not knowing what's happening to them it's just it, it breaks your heart and it tears it apart so it's not something that you wish anyone or anything but before we had the chance to to, to breathe you know to, to experience relief we started seeing a spot that started to take um, all kind of colors on the exact spot where the the inserted the needle to draw the blood on uh, Luna's uh, little body right under her chin 
Uh, so what, what we understood is that a vet can draw blood from the little paws. Sometimes that doesn't go well, then they will look for other spots on their body. And in this case, they went for this spot right under the chin. As you're seeing right now, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing a voiceover, so I'm not looking at the video, but I'm sure by now you've seen a couple of images on the background. Miko, no, I'm trying to do you something. Miko is here with me. Um, so... Yeah, so Luna started to, to also lose her fur on that spot and the skin started to look inflamed and pinkish and just irritated and purple and just it got, it, it got very itchy. So Luna started scratching like crazy, which made it only worse. Miko, hey! Sorry guys, this is how it goes for 24 hours. Miko, it's just a naughty cat. So she kept scratching and licking the place until... Literally, it became 100% fur-free, smooth, and sometimes it looked slimy and just not a pleasant thing to see. And it kept growing. That This spot kept growing and getting worse. And every time it looked a little bit uh, calm, Luna would start scratching again and it would start all over. It would start bleeding and looking bad again. And there's just no way to do anything about it since we cannot be with Luna 24 hours. And we cannot you know, put gloves on her little paws. So, the, yes, we do trim their nails, uh, but uh, only a little bit. Just, there's the tips. So, you know, we, of course, still have nails, thank God. And uh, that's something that animals have the right to keep, you know. Just don't take away anything from uh, animals because there are some psychos that choose t to have the nails completely removed. That is just, that's just very horrific, inhumane something to do. So, um, so we went on July the 16th, so this is one month later, we went back to the vet, and we got some medication, uh, I don't know the name of it, I think it was hydrocortiderm, uh, it was supposed to keep it moist to calm down the itchy feeling, didn't do a thing, and the spot got bigger and bigger, and Luna kept scratching, and the spot get, kept getting bigger, so on August the 12th, so we're now, so we started on June the 16th. We're now August the 12th, so that is two months, two months. We went back again because we didn't have a good feeling about it at all and the way it looked. And it was not progressing any well. We're not, not healing at all. It was just getting worse. The spa was getting bigger. So, um, yes, it, it, it just looked weird. It looks it looked weird. I found a picture of a dinosaur that's on the internet somewhere that someone sent me. I don't know what it was about, but that's really how it looked like, you guys. And I will insert it in this video, so you will, you will see it at some point. Because that really does justice on what we were seeing in real. This is how it looks, something like that. Um, so, um, so yeah, so 12, uh, August the 12th, we went back. And um, the vet did confirm that it looked a little bit infected. And gave us what's called Kleindosepti something 25 milligrams and to, th then this was to prevent any infections from from inside in, in her body so that was a good thing because that's what we were uh, worried about that we were looking at an infection that we not we could not get to because you know infections start from the inside so that gave us a relief but the skin was still not healing so all the medications did not address the skin the the, the surface of the skin because that's something we cannot control that's not within their control nor within our control because your pet can keep scratching and keep agitating that spot and the spot will never heal or it would take so many days or months in this case before it heals because the skin just doesn't get the chance to heal it's just as simple as that so then we started thinking about what and the vet didn't know what to advise us so then we had to come up with something um and this is just not our vet. It's just a, a problem when you look on the internet. Sometimes it's really hard to keep your pets from doing something that's very natural to them. I mean, cats scratch themselves, cats uh, cat lick themselves, they groom. That's 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 what we want them to do. B grooming cats means a healthy cat, a happy cat. So, yeah. So, but how do you teach them that something that's natural to them and they should be doing in this case is bad and they shouldn't be doing that. So you cannot just try to um, restrain them 
all of a sudden they're not supposed to do that. So that makes it very hard to change a natural behavior to your pet just because now it's not something you want to have. So it's, it, it's, it, it, your pet won't understand it. They're like, what are you doing to us? Why are you so mean? So we had to come up with something where Luna can still scratch, but just not damage the skin any further. So um, what we tried is a cotton cloth. We, we cut a piece, a rectangle piece uh, of cotton, unbleached. So this is unbleached, unprocessed cotton because you do not want some um, perfumed or chemically uh, processed uh, fabric on uh, the skin of your pet when it's uh, pet when it's in this condition. So unbleached, unprocessed cotton. We did it around the neck, but this kind of cotton is really soft so it end up rolling up into string and not doing anything not covering anything and luna would just scratch around it with ease so we tried the medical gauze because again it needs to be um it, it needs to be not processed but the same thing happened with the medical gauze and i hope i'm pronouncing it right um, did not help mostly for this for this reason it would just roll up and become a string become just a thin thread around uh, the neck so we had to come up with something um what we came up with eventually and this is not something that we should take credit for this is something that we found on the website of a dutch veteran uh, vet here in uh, holland i think it was a he or a she i'm not really sure it doesn't matter what they suggested is please use a sock Cut the top of the sock where your toes are normally are in the sock. Cut that space, and uh, on the other side, your sock already has an opening. And just pull that, uh, um, pull that. So the sock from which you cut the top half of. So you n now you have some sort of a, a tunnel, a tunnel sock. Pull that over the head gently, and just let it cover the spot, the area where the cat is not supposed to scratch. That way, they said, they explained, that way the cat can still have the feeling that they can do something about the itch without getting them so frustrated because otherwise when you strain them completely, they feel like frustrated because it's itchy, they cannot do a thing about it. So it's really not humane. If you love your pet, that's not what you do. But sometimes, sometimes we do have to do things. I'm, I'm, I mean, when the medical... Uh, when it's so urgent and you know there's yeah there's no there is no sometimes there is no space for feeling sorry for your pet because you love them and you want them to get better but in this case we had an alternative so this sock just get a, a, a sports sock they're thick um, your cat can have the feeling that they still can sc scratch but in th in in, um, in in uh, how do you say that in real you won't be able to scratch the skin open or damage it so you have a win-win situation so that's what we went uh, uh, with and uh, that's what we've been doing ever since uh, ever august the 12th we came up with the sock method that i like to call the sock method and you guys it was just a solution from god it was just a solution from heaven only then we started seeing the skin getting better and better because Luna could not scratch it open anymore with her little uh, nails because she would she would start scratching like crazy and it was too, it was too painful to watch knowing what the consequences will be for us so we always watched it while our hearts skipped a beat or two so the sock method is really really good and this is exactly why we're making this uh, video to help you guys find a way in these sometimes situations that get us desperate and clueless not knowing what to do how 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 should you keep a cat from scratching when scratching is part of their daily ritual almost <laughs> sometimes not always sometimes sometimes you see them. and our cats do not go outside so and they get checked regularly by the vet they don't have any fleas they don't have any conditions they're always inside we're living here in amsterdam city center so we cannot let them outside because it's just traffic this that so there's just no way and we and we live small we don't even have uh, a garden where they can play with other cats so i can guarantee you that our cats are clean hygienic and all that but still sometimes they feel like they need to scratch around their ears or i don't know so 
that's yeah that's not something that you can prevent or something you should want to prevent just let the cat do their thing um, so this is why we're doing this video with this video we want to help you guys out there that are experiencing something like this with your cats remember this video is not meant to help you decide a diagnosis in any way shape or form when you see something going on with your pet that you do not understand or trust always consult with your vet always 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 especially with cats cats are even different than dogs cats sometimes can have a lot of pain but they don't have really a way to show it like dogs and i've had a dog i know how dogs can be sometimes they can be whining you just feel that they're different their body is completely i don't know it's just a different behavior but with cats sometimes it just takes you by surprise because it's been there all along and the cats didn't have a good way to show it to us so especially with cats but of course it goes with all kind of animals and even us humans when you feel something see something on the body that you do not understand and it just doesn't look right as it should be always consult with the vet and when it comes to humans of course with your family doctor just joking guys i know you got that um so yeah consult with your doctor let him or her examine and decide what's going on but what we had was an allergic reaction case but even allergic reactions can have can have many reasons among them it can be a, a, a something that the, a, an allergy they, they created as a reaction to food that they shouldn't have or fleas if your cats have fleas that can create a huge allergic reaction also on their skin and i'm telling you guys that's not the case with our cats for the reason that i just mentioned um so um so just don't think too light about these kind of conditions and do not assume that allergic reaction on the skin is always just harmless. Like I said, sometimes it can have to be with food. It means you have to change the whole diet of your cat. And with uh, if it's fleas, that is at least something that you can do about that. So, so what we're talking about specifically in this video is an allergic reaction to a needle. Luna got in her... Uh, and, uh, right onto the chin when they were trying to draw blood to examine a, a possible cause for the epilepsy seizure attack that she got so this is the only thing that we're trying to discuss here for no in, in no way shape or form is this video something that would inspire you to feel like you should have your own diagnose always go to the vet always always when you see something that you don't trust always go to the vet uh, what else do we want to say about this yeah, what we had was somewhat a harmless allergy reaction. I'm saying ha harmless, but even this could turn into something ugly, like you're seeing in the video, guys, in the background. If anything that you do not attend to, anything that you do not try to solve and try to attend to, can become something ugly and even dangerous. Even something that may look harmless on the surface in uh, on first sight. So just take these kind of stuff serious try try to treat them try to consult with your vet and see what the possibilities are and sometimes the vet even the vet doesn't know what to do and in those cases we try to come up with stuff with each other and that's what happened here so that's why we choose to share this sock method with you guys so hopefully you will find it helpful hopefully you will never need it but if you do then at least you know that this is something that you should try and again, this is not meant as a substitution for anything medical or medication. This is only meant as a way of keeping your cat uh, from scratching an agitated spot on her body or his body. And that's the only thing that this sock method does. So again, it's not meant as a diagnose. It's not meant to substitute any medical help or medications. It's only meant to keep the scratching to a minimum. Or I should say the impact of scratching to a minimum for now i wish you guys from me mike and the cats always a healthy life a happy healthy life for you and your pets and thank you so much for listening to this video again we hope it was kind of helpful for you guys out there and um please let in if you guys have other tips other theories other stuff that you find even more helpful please 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 share that in the comments uh, box with us all 
and that's how we try to help each other benefit from the experiences that worked for each and, and, and every one of us so anyway for now i'm gonna leave it here thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you guys in the next video have a good day oh it was such a shander <laughs> it's, 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 it's such a shander <laughs> Oi, such a shanda. If you guys don't know what reference that is, then I'm sorry.